Hey, welcome to the big book of GH5S picture profiles. I just really wanted to do this for myself, and I figured why not just go ahead and post it to YouTube in case somebody else was wondering the same things, and that's essentially what is the difference between all the picture profiles on the GH5S? I know like I have, since I've had the camera, I've used several of the profiles, but I've never actually gone through and, you know, just really seen the differences between them. So I went into all the picture profiles and changed all the settings to zero across the board. And I don't remember actually if they are at default zero or if they have adjustments made to them. I didn't just reset, I should have just reset my camera to factory settings, but um, I didn't, I was scared to do that. So I didn't do that. But anyway, so I changed everything to zero. I have the ISO set to 400 and the aperture set to, I believe, 3.5 or 4.5. It doesn't really matter. But the only thing I did to adjust exposure was change the shutter speed or shutter angle. And I tried to expose for 50% um, IRE, like on the left side of my face, so the bright, the key side of my face. Um, I set my zebras to 50, and as soon as I got some zebras there, that's where I set the exposure to, you know, try to keep all of them at the same exposure level. As for white balance, um, the key light is a daylight balanced LED, so I set the white balance to 5600 Kelvin, and you know, I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but I figured at least all of the uh, picture profiles would be the same, so it shouldn't matter too much. I shot all of these in all I 400 megabits, uh, 422 10 bit at UHD, and then I don't have a color chart, or I did, but I lost it, so I just tried to put a lot of stuff in the scene that would give you ideas of like really bold uh, primary colors and like the RGB uh, spectrum as well. And I miss focus a little bit. I think I'm back focused some, but once again, this is mostly about color, contrast, and saturation, so that really shouldn't matter either. And I did um, this shot in my, my office, and then I also did a shot outside. And once again, did the same thing, exposing for 50% on the left side of my face and white balance at 5600 Kelvin. In terms of ISO, the native ISO of the camera is 400, um, except for Vlog L, which is native at 800. And I actually forgot to change it to 800 for the indoor shot, but I did change it to 800 for the outdoor shot. But once again, I don't think it really matters in this test. For the second series of shots, um, what I did was just adjust the exposure. So I brought down the highlights to try to bring the highlights back from outside and then tried to bring the shadows up. And, you know, I didn't mess with the curves, I didn't mess with the saturation or anything, just went into the little sliders in DaVinci Resolve for highlight and shadow. Because some of the profiles, as you can tell, like Vivid, for instance, is just like crazily saturated, but also extremely contrasty. And I wanted to see the degree to which you could bring them back or make them match. And then also in, for Vlog, I um, did some common um, Rec. 709 conversion LUTs. Um, so I've got the Panasonic Rec. 709 to Vlog to Rec. 709. And then I've got the Airy Log C, the Leaming LUT, and then also the GH Alex Daylight Soft LUT. And those are some pretty common ones that I feel like people might be using. So I figured I'd just go ahead and run through those two. This might be going too fast. And I also wanted to kind of go through the color page on DaVinci Resolve and maybe show you the waveforms and also the vector scopes, but I didn't want the video to get crazy long, but I figured what you could do if you were really that interested in it and you wanted to take your time and maybe dive into some of these in more detail, you could easily just screenshot them and then just bring them into Resolve or uh, Lumetri or whatever, you know, whatever you use to color correct color grade and you could, you know, kind of look at the differences uh, in more detail. As far as like what I've noticed and, you know, kind of looking at these images for a couple days now and just putting this video together is I was um, I'm pretty surprised at how close they all are in terms of color uh, there's a few outliers I think the biggest outliers in terms of just color you know shift um, outside of the normal are cine like D and then HLG HLG being the one that's most different from all the others um, even vlog once you add the conversion LUT the Panasonic LUT it really brings it pretty much right back in line with the majority of the other uh, color profiles, picture profiles. You know, there is differences, you know, some of them, you know, shift colors a little bit here and there. But the other thing too, that I was really surprised about is how much the skin tones are almost exactly the same across all of them. I mean, there's very slight shifts. And the other, the big outlier for that one being HLG. And um, what you'll notice, and this isn't, you know, this is pretty common knowledge for the GH5S, is that it definitely pushes magenta and red into the skin tones, which gives it kind of a more pleasing 
look, even though it's not necessarily technically accurate, but it definitely looks a little bit more pleasing. And another potential variable is just the degree to which a LED, I'm using the Godox VL150, might have a slight magenta cast to it. If you were so inclined to, you know, take some screenshots and bring these into, you know, Lumetri or Resolve and then check out the vector scopes and especially isolate the skin tones, you'll see how the skin is definitely pushing red and magenta. Once again, you have to factor in the white balance. I set my white balance to 5600 Kelvin. I don't know what the actual white balance of the light is, even though it's a daylight balance white, uh, light. You know, there's always a little bit of uh, variable, you know, plus or minus a few hundred degrees. And then, you know, I didn't use a gray card or white card to do a custom white balance. So it could be a little bit off. I do think, so it, it also depends on the lighting, like the Panasonic uh, Rec. 709 LUT, I don't like it um, most of the time. I think especially under um, artificial lights, under LED lights, it definitely pushes too red. Kind of look, makes me look like I've got a sunburn or something. But strangely enough, like the Airy Log C LUT, which I know is not made for this camera, definitely went crazy on the blues on the indoor shot but didn't look too bad on the outdoor shot. The Leeming LUT definitely needed some a different exposure. That wasn't the exposure that it's looking for apparently. Um, so it definitely came out underexposed, but I feel like color-wise it looks pretty good. And the GHI Alex LUT is definitely not a very accurate LUT and just definitely a more stylized one that you can kind of take it or leave it depending on your taste. I was definitely surprised overall at how close they all are in terms of dynamic range and how much is recoverable. If you have like clipped highlights, um, don't be afraid to go in and try to bring some of them back because a lot of them have exceed 100 IRE and can capture more information than will be displayed. So if you go ahead and just try to bring those back, you're, you'll probably be surprised at how much you can get back. I also think in terms of exposure, if you do like HLG, exposing for 50% uh, skin tones is definitely too hot for HLG. I was not able to recover the highlights on the HLG in the outdoor shot to the degree that I was able to for just about every other profile. So that's definitely not um, the exposure that you should be doing with HLG. Something less, probably maybe around 40% or something like that for HLG would work better. The other big difference that you should be paying attention to if you're interested is the red channel. Um, I think that some of the profiles are a little bit noisier in the reds. And I think I think the cleanest ones are natural, uh, Cine D, Cine Light D, uh, maybe uh, like 709, and then also HLG and Vlog. I think those will have the cleanest red channel, and also maybe the cleanest, you know, shadows overall too. Take a look at the reds, and then also take a look at the shadow side of my face for each of the profiles to see which one, which ones are doing the best in terms of overall noise level. And then you can even look at the, the wall in the back. Um, the noise level is pretty apparent on that, especially in the zoomed in shots. Even though they're all set to zero across the board in terms of noise reduction, I don't know if they're all starting out at, 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 a, different, at a different point. So if you are using the GH5, you know, obviously these are not the same cameras. They don't have the same sensor and they don't have the same color science. So you're not gonna get the same results with the GH5 as the GH5S. And I shoot um, all the time with people who shoot GH5s and our cameras do not match. The differences between the picture profiles might be similar just with the GH5's own, you know, color science. Anyway, I hope that was helpful or interesting. And, uh, you know, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments. 